I knew you'd be here and I'm so glad you are. I have some fun little friends I want to introduce to you today and they will help us do a little math together. So let's get started. <laughs> Can you see my little friends? They don't have names, and um, I don't know if you've ever done felting, but they're little felted creatures, and they're made by my daughter, and I just thought, oh, I think that they can help us do some math today. And we are going to start with a little subtraction problem, and I was playing with my friends, and some of them will stand up, and some of them will have to lie down, if <laughs> that's okay. So this little one, it's just a little penguin, and I think it's my bunny that won't, yeah, my bunny won't stand, so we'll lay the bunny down. I'll maybe put the bunny in the front so you can see better. And the little bear, the little bear and the little bunny lie down. Can you see how many little animals I have all together? So do you remember how we were working with addition and we were stacking our digits vertically. We're going to do more of that today. But the first problem that we're going to start off with is 6 minus 2, because I just thought, well, I've got six little friends here. And we could just do that mentally, and we can use our friends to help us. But we're learning that we stack our numbers vertically, one directly underneath the other. And so if I take away two of my friends, how many will I have left? How many are left? Can you see? One, two, three, and four. <laughs> All right, friends, you get to scurry over here, and we'll just leave them here to keep us company while we work on our math together. Isn't that fun? Great. All righty. So we're going to continue to work with this combination of six and two. Let's see what else we get. But this time, how about we work with the tens? How about we say 60? Okay. So how many tens are in the number 60? You got it. Six tens. So I'll put six. Remember we talked about we can call this a long or a rod, and there are ten little sections in each one. So I've got my six tens out. Do you remember we were working with this combination, right? We're going to take away 20 or two tens. There we go. And what does that leave us with? Four tens, which we can say as 40. I bet you can tell where we're going next. <laughs> How about I put out my place value disks instead of my base 10 blocks because they're very efficient to work with when we get into the hundreds. But I just have to remember that this little round disk stands for 10 of these, 10 tens in these little round disks. Alrighty. At home, how about you write the number that I put on the place value mat and I will write it here. Now, given what we've been working on so far, what number do you think I will write underneath? We just keep working with that too, don't we? But now we are in the hundreds and looking at how we stack our numbers. We can almost do a dotted line to help us see how carefully we're stacking our numbers vertically. All right, do I have any <laughs> Being in the ones, I, zero minus zero, that just equals zero. In the tens, we have zero minus zero. That's just going to equal also zero. Now let's take our two hundreds away, which leaves us with, as we've already shown, six minus two equals four, but we're talking about hundreds. So 600 minus 200 equals 400. Now I know that most of you can do that mentally, but so what I'm wanting you to focus on today is this neat um, representation of the digits, one right on top of another. 
So how about we try a problem that's actually a little more difficult, okay? Can you build this, please, with your place value disks? If you prefer the base 10 blocks at home, just use those. We want to make sure we have the right tool that works best for the way that we individually think. And I'll build that number with the place value disks here. And there we go. And we're, we're working with this 600 a lot today, aren't we? We're working with six. But now we've got nine tens. Can you picture in your mind the ten, a tens frame? And think about what nine looks like. We don't always fit it on here in the shape of a tens frame. But I like for you to be able to hold in your mind what the different numbers look like. Okay, so we, I won't... I'm not going to do the tens frame here because it just doesn't quite fit. But I can see four and four make eight, and I know then just one more. Now I've got my nine. I'm all set. How many ones will I put on my chart to match the chart that I hope you built at home? There we go. Look, my one of my ones even scooching off over off the placemat, but that's okay. All righty. Do you think that's eight? Does that look correct to you? We have 698. And remember, I said we are going to do a subtraction problem. So this time, we're working with a double digit number. And since we're taking away, do I need to build any kind of a number down here? Good thinking. We just have to take away from the um, place value disks that we have. So I have eight ones minus five ones. So let's do it. Take five off and how many ones do I have left? At home, you can go ahead and record the answer or you can call the answer out to me so I can hear you. All right, nine tens, how many shall I take away? And how many? Do I have left? I like to remind myself when I'm working, nine minus four equals five. <clears throat> and that just helps me memorize my facts. Do we have to take anything away from the hundreds column? We don't, but we do need to show that 600 is still there on our place value mat. So our answer is 653. Now, how about we talk about how to check our work? Because a good mathematician should always check her or his work periodically throughout the, the work period to be sure that you're on the right track. What do you think the opposite of subtraction is? Yes, instead of taking it apart, we're going to put it back together. Great. Now we could think about this in your mind as a number bond. You could look at the two parts and the one whole. We're going to put the parts back together. This little guy down here is one of the parts. So I am going to rewrite 653. And which one is the other part? Did you say 45? You're getting the hang of this these days, aren't you? I'm so proud of how hard you've been working. Well. I'm going to go ahead and show this as a number bond too and let's see if we can think about what goes here. We started out with a whole and we know that this is the whole because then we said, well, we are going to take away 45 and we, when we took 45 away, we were left with 653. So now all we have to do is put those back together and we should end up with 698, right? Let's check it out. Five plus three, we could count on five, six, seven, eight, if I don't have that fact memorized. And I do always like to say my facts out loud because that does help me get them memorized. Five plus four, you probably know that that equals nine, but if you don't know, you could think about five plus five because that's so easy making the number 10 then we just take one away because four is one less. And that gives us nine. 
Now again, I don't have anything to add in that column, but I do have to record my 600. And now I can see that my subtraction was correct because my addition adds back up to the whole. Great, well you've got some similar problems to do in your textbook and workbook, so I'll let you get started on that. And my little friends and I say goodbye to you, but we'll see you next time.